Good morning, guys. And today we have a uh, one of my favorite guests. Her name is Melissa, and she's a loan originator here in Texas. I use her services quite often when I'm a little bit uh, concerned about the industry, about the interest rates, as we all are right now. And she's one of my main sources to ask, what should we do or what can we do to make the cost of purchasing a house more affordable? So I asked Melissa to explain some of the black magic that she uses to make you guys be able to afford your monthly payment. So Melissa, tell me what is this spreadsheet that you're about to show me because this looks very complicated. Yes, it, it. I know it does look a little bit complicated, but it really isn't. So we're gonna focus in on the two one buy down option here. So can you tell me what two one buy down Okay. What does it mean? So all of these examples here, they're temporary buy downs, which means that someone is going to have a lower interest rate for the first one, two or three years of owning the home. Mm -hmm. the, the cool thing about this product is it's still a 30 year fixed rate and it's based on whatever today's normal rate would be. So you get a loan, you're qualified at today's normal rate, you know what the payment at today's normal rate would be, and you know you can qualify with that payment, but you don't have to for the first so one. So if, if the monthly payment looks a little too much, or I just don't like the, you know, I just don't feel like this is a very comfortable area for me, but I'm still qualified. Yes. It means that one, two, three, two, one buy down could be an option for me. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So how does it work? So with the three, two, one buy down, that's the most dramatic difference because okay. the seller now in all of these examples, the seller is giving a contribution to closing costs. Okay. So you as their agent would negotiate the maximum amount of credit you think you can get from the seller. Gotcha. And that credit could be used, normally would use that to pay closing costs. But okay. in this case, we're using it to really subsidize the payment for the first couple of years. So they are getting a lower effective rate. It's not, their interest rate is still in this example, 6.875. But if they get the 321 buy down, so for the first year, their payment is based here. So 3.875, so three points lower than the final official rate. And their monthly savings per month is 653. So if I understand this table correctly, if we had no concessions from the seller at the $357 loan with 6.875 interest rate, our monthly payment looked like 2,300, correct? Yes. Now that's principal and interest only. So this does principal not and interest only, not counting the taxes and insurance. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that if we can negotiate the buy down with the seller, Which then on year on year one, or, or how yeah. does it work? So, so what you would have to negotiate is fifteen thousand nine fifty one. Okay, so my job as an agent is to get yes. the seller to agree to fifteen to sixteen thousand. Yes. Yep. Uh huh. If you can do that okay. every month from this pile of fifteen thousand sixteen thousand dollars, the first year six hundred and fifty three dollars a month. Wow, that's quite a bit of money. Is it's <laughs> like six six hundred fifty dollars per month in savings. That makes a significant difference in how comfortable that payment is. Now you're of looking. Of course, right. yes, for twelve months, right? That's for the first twelve months. Okay. This mm -hmm. is the same as getting an interest rate of three point eight seven five. Now, okay, it's only for twelve months, but year two it goes to an effective rate of four point eight seven five. So that's savings of four forty seven a month. Year three. Which is still not too bad, right? 450 oh, right there. Mm -hmm. I'll take 450 any yeah. day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> any day. And then year three would go to 228. Gotcha. So your savings each month are, or not each month, but each year are diminishing. But for the next 72 months, which is three years, your monthly payment are lower than they would otherwise been, correct? Exactly. Okay. So yeah. that is actually very helpful because usually people who are buying a home, their first year is the most difficult year because besides buying a house, you usually need to buy furniture, you know, paint, all of that great 
stuff. So yeah. when you're already paying $2,300 just in, in principal and interest on your loan, that makes it so much tighter for you to go out and get that couch for a new home. But because you're saving what looks like $7,800 that first year, that yeah. $7,800 can be now redirected to, you know, to help with the purchase of the furnishing of your house. Exactly, exactly. So and their total savings over three years is $15,000, even though they did not contribute in any way, right? It was just purely my my black magic yes. of how so, to talk people into <laughs> thinking exactly. that $15,000 is a good deal for them. You're working the good magic here. <laughs> okay, good. So I'm working the black the white magic over here with the seller while Melissa is doing her gray magic in the background, making sure that she can qualify for a loan, okay? Exactly. And the other okay. cool thing with this and why I really like this compared to a permanent buy down, and you could buy the right down permanently, but okay. most people think that, and if you did that, the same amount of money wouldn't, it wouldn't have as big an impact in the monthly savings. And once that rate's bought down permanently, when you refinance it, whatever money, if you do that in the next year or two, which we think people will most likely be able to do, then you lost the remaining benefit that you got from the seller. Now here, if you refinance at the end of year two, you've still mm -hmm. got $2,700 left to go towards your payment. That money, instead of going to your payment, since you're refinancing, goes to pay down your mortgage. Now tell me, who has this money? Are they lay laying in the escrow account someplace? It, the, the lender holds it. The in lender. It. So the lender actually holds the money, right? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So if I decided to refinance on year two, then that two side, the lender will actually know that I have twenty seven hundred dollars left in, on my bonds. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Right. And yeah, I mean, and we we're so confident that the market is going to produce lower interest rates in the next couple of years that we're also if if someone closes with us and, and we keep the servicing. Then, which we do with most of our loans, then we are refinancing with no lender fees. For how long? What's uh, until this? December 2025. Wow, for three years? Yeah. For two years? Yep. Okay. Yeah. They're yeah, very confident. Yeah. I, I mean, must say that that's a little lack of confidence right there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but that, that's contingent on you still being the loan servicing. Right? Yes. Yeah, which we do almost all always. Which is a big plus, guys. I'm not going to cover it in this video. And for, for most of you, you don't really understand or care who services your loans versus who originates your loan. But what Melissa is basically saying is that, um, to be honest, it's a little unusual. I personally always had my loans resold basically on the same day that we closed in the house. Uh, it is very unusual for a lender to keep the loans in-house, means not to resell them at a the profit to some third parties whom you never met and actually continue to work with you and stay in relationship with you. That's actually unique. Okay, now tell me about the 2-1 buy-down. <laughs> so the 2-1 buy-down would just, it would be like the next step down in your negotiating. Let's say okay. you get 16000 from the seller, you're going to okay. get 8000 8100 okay. So if you can get 8100 then the buyer saves 447 a month for the first 12 months and 228 the second. Okay, that so a lot, a lot less savings in that case. Yeah, a lot, it, it is a lot less savings, but also less for the seller and therefore some. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more realistic to negotiate. Now, let's just ha play hypothetical that I was able to negotiate $10,000 in our concessions. Can we utilize the extra $2,000 somehow? Can we stick it in some yeah, like how? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that would go towards either maybe paying a discount point up front to buy okay. the rate down or cover closing costs or. It, so basically yeah. that 8,100, uh, 8, it still would be what we need to use to buy down to two points, but then the remaining 1,900, we could allocate to lower the monthly payment somehow differently again. Yes. So that, that would be more of a permanent buy down. That, permanent by them. Okay. Yeah, and you're you're not you're not using a ton of money, mm -hmm. so it's it's a little bit. We, we would look at different options. So, do we want to put it towards a permanent buy down of the final interest rate, or do we want to cover closing costs? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, and just to put this in perspective, if you were to negotiate, like instead of 
a credit, you negotiated $10,000 lower purchase price. Okay. Because a lot of times people think, oh, I want to get the house for less money. Okay. But that only saves you $65 a month at these. Mm -hmm. So it just, this is a much better way to use that money if you're able to negotiate it, I think. For most I people. Actually I actually have a question too. So I had a situation where we had um, a high interest rate, but the house appraised for 25K more than we anticipated. Okay. okay. So just run that idea by me. So how could we use the, so guys, that was the situation. We were bidding on a house. The house was 330. We gave them the asking price and they accepted our offer. When we appraised, we appraised at 350. Okay. okay. So at that time, it was with a different lender, but we did use some of the money toward the interest rate by then. Can you explain how would that be done? Like imagine you had that client. So it, I will say increasing the purchase price after the appraisal has come in is going to be something that different lenders are going to handle differently. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. it, it's not, and it's a little bit into the gray area, but mm -hmm. there are certainly times where you're able to utilize some of that extra equity by increasing the purchase price and then maybe negotiating some seller credits. Mm -hmm. And sometimes cool. you see that happen when work needs to be done to the house or something like that, where mm -hmm. the seller can't do it, doesn't want to do it. Or mm -hmm. there are scenarios where that, that happens, mm -hmm. um, but it, I will just caution that it's going to be probably specific to lenders. Lenders might have some overlays on that others. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So one zero buy down. What did that all about? So this just means that seller wasn't able to be, or wasn't willing to give up much. So all you could get was 2746 from the seller. And what that would do is, is cover the cost of $228 per month of the buyer's payment mm -hmm. for that first 12 months. Now I'm going to throw in one other thing here. Let's say your seller doesn't want, won't negotiate anything, or you're in a multiple offer situation. Okay. Build Mortgage has a loan option where we will pay for the one year buy down. Tell me more about that. So that is Guild basically just being completely committed to this purchase market mm -hmm. and wanting to help people buy homes and be able to feel comfortable with the payment. So mm -hmm. if you were, obviously we would prefer that the seller pays it, but if, mm -hmm. they, if it's just not possible to get that negotiated, then we will cover that $2,700. No, now, question. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then with the two-year buy-down, we can also do that with the two-year buy-down. If the seller is willing to cover one year, $5,300, we'll cover the second, $2,746. Do they need to have a particular credit score to qualify for that um, freebie from your company? The freebie, yes. That one has to be conventional. Conventional. So, what the credit score needs to be? Uh, I mean, technically 620, but you really honestly need probably 680 or 700 to get an approval and a decent interest rate. And gotcha. conventional pricing is changing a little bit. We can, we might touch on that. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's but basically, mean. that would be a conventional loan. That would not be because a lot of people ask me, what about first time buyer programs? So, that would not work out with a first time buyer program, right? Well, so this would work with one of the 3% down conventional programs. Mm -hmm. And I will say if someone has a 680 credit score or higher and their income is below 120% of the area median, then there are some extra incentives for helping them with payment. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's at 80%, of the area median income, so 76,000 for that number for most people in most of the Metroplex, DFW Metroplex, then they are gonna qualify for a lower conventional interest rate and they can like layer that on with this program. So that is a way that, that we can help first time home buyers, um, help them with affordability, both permanently and temporarily. Um, this cannot be used with down payment assistance. That is, those loans are priced separately by the agencies that provide the funding for those. So the, the freebie works with conventional, um, all of the conventional loans, um, the, the buy down can be used with FHA, VA, um, or conventional. So just to kind of circle back. So this to the one in color mm -hmm. could work for the first time buyer program. 
for if we're using Fannie Mae's Home Ready or Freddie Mac's Home Possible. Those are the 3% down, down okay. payment conventional loan programs with better pricing for at least some uh, income categories and then also okay. lower mortgage insurance rates gotcha. for those buyers. Gotcha. But overall, the, the one in color we can use for first time buyer program and the one that is just your company and nobody else helping out, that would need to be a conventional, not the first time buyer program. Correct. Now, and the, the true first time home buyer programs like TSHAC, TDHCA, mm -hmm. and SNAP, we can't use any buy down program, mm -hmm. any of those. So okay. those, we just, we can't use any temporary buy down program with, can't even use a permanent buy down. Really? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, they have the option of taking 5% assistance, 4%, 3%, or 2%, and the interest rate does drop as the amount of assistance goes down. So it functions it doesn't in a way out. similar to discount points, but it's the rates are just set by the program and you just get whatever the rates are on that day. Mm, okay, gotcha. Okay, anything else that you can throw in before we conclude? So. Long story short, guys, that's with a lot of numbers and some of it might have been like a, a lot of um, hypothetical scenarios, but what I would kind of bring it together to you, let's just say you are trying to buy a house and overall you're making sufficient income, but let's just say the current uh, monthly payments are maybe higher than your current rent, for example. Mm -hmm. If you just go with the current um, with the current interest rate, what I would say, do not delay purchasing in that case. See if you could qualify for one of those one to buy downs, but speak with Melissa first before deciding that, yeah, that will be great. That will work for me. She will need to make sure that you can qualify for for this type of um, negotiations. But then if you can, then let's just say you're saying, OK, if I if I rent for another year, it will cost me $2,000 per month. Or if I buy, it will cost me $2,300 per month, right? So in that case, we can adjust those calculations to see if we can lower your monthly payment. Absolutely. Did that kind of summarize it correctly? Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, okay. because sometimes I try to, uh, sometimes we, we spend so much time looking at the details that I think people get lost in, a, in what I, it means for them in, in terms of um, practical application. Oh, no, very, very true. Okay, sounds good. Well, in that case, we actually have a couple of more topics to discuss, but they will be discussed at a different video. So uh, for you guys who I'm hoping that by now you all have Melissa saved in, in your phone number or something, but Melissa, just in case, how can they contact you? Uh, my direct, not, direct line is 214-535-6738. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram and from Instagram, find all kinds of ways to connect with me. Right. And you even have your own YouTube channel, don't you? I do. Yes. Okay. So what's your YouTube channel? Melissa Condenza. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So I'm going to add Melissa's contact information in the description of the video and a link to her YouTube channel. So please like and subscribe Melissa's YouTube. Thank all right. You. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay.